I note the obvious differences in the human family. Some of us are serious. Some thrive on comedy. Some declare their lives are lived as true profundity, and others claim they really live the real reality. The variety of our skin tones can confuse, bemuse, delight, brown and pink and beige and purple, tan and blue and white. I note the obvious differences between each sort and type, but we are more alike, my friends, than we are unalike. Fifty years wasn't that long ago, but now that uh, this this milestones come up, it's given a lot of us that are like undergraduates and I would even say graduates uh, here like time to think about it. And it's made me realize that there are a lot of people that came before me, walked in my foot, not only walked in my footsteps, but like laid groundwork yeah. so that I could, you know, walk here and live here comfortably. It's it's wonderful to um, have this anniversary, but it's also like something that it makes you want to contribute to it as well. I don't think it really settled in Pride. I didn't really process it until I started seeing like the flags around campus mm. with like <clears throat> people from like, you know, the front of the, some of the first students that ever graduated from Rice. And I remember once, it was one outside of Baker, my, my college, and I remember I just like stood there and I just looked at it and I was just so proud in that moment. Like she did it and she was one of the first people like Sammy said that laid down the foundation um, for us, for us to be here and have uh, resources and c community and opportunities that we do now. Just knowing as a black person in this nation to be able to excel the way we have in the past uh, half century is really outstanding. And I think it definitely showcases not only the powers and the abilities of black people, but also the resources that have been given to us. You know, I think Rice has done a pretty phenomenal job of opening it, its doors to black life. It's something that definitely gives us the opportunity to be on the same playing field with other students and with other cultures um, and different races and ethnicities. I remember specifically Soul Night. Um, what a night, man, that was dedicated <laughs> to that, man. It, like, you, any, everyone in that room could feel, like, the magnitude of 50 years. It was such a prideful moment for me. I remember feeling so overwhelmed and so happy that I had the opportunity to be at a school like this and that I'm not the only one at a school like this mm. and that I have people I can look to my left and my right and see people that look like me and mm -hmm. understand the pride and understand the, the gratitude that I have that um, those first people walk through the, the school doors and lay down the foundation that we have today. So when I was at Rice, there really wasn't enough of a critical mass of African-American students to have a true impact on the community. Rice was uh, certainly well-intentioned, but not necessarily fully informed on what kind of community we needed to provide to students from diverse backgrounds. I think since then, Rice has spent its time really thinking about the needs of diverse students. How can we help those students to become the best that they are and how can they help to become to Rice to become the best that it can be? The African American presence is more felt. It is more uh, coherent. It is more active. It is more vital. I don't know if you've ever had a chance to go to a Soul Night or a Lunar New Year or um, Afrikaye or Colores Latinos, any of those programs, you are blown away by the level of commitment and dedication and talent that the students put into those programs, but you're also just sort of overwhelmed at how diverse the people are that are working in them. I chose Rice with the hopes that, even though I didn't know much about it, that I would come here and find my niche and find my people and my community and my interest. I came in with a very like, kind of realistic mindset and saying that blessing you might face things that you that you're not used to you might see a lot less of people that look like you here um, but I think most of all um, I was I was hopeful that I would have a community that was supportive of me no matter what um, the community that pushed me to be myself and to aim for higher things I wasn't necessarily concerned with getting involved with the black community but it was more my number one goal was just getting involved into rice community you know and just being able to uh, engage myself in such a prestigious environment and to be able to compete with such bright minds. So when I came to Rice, 
and I came to the first BSA event, which for me was the MLK Vigil, I was blown away because <laughs> I was, I had this community and you all looked like me and you all um, just really enjoyed having that experience. My expectation was to continue to be a part of this great community, take advantage of everything that I could and also do my best to give back. One of my fellow classmates um, last year, my residential college celebrated its 50th an anniversary. And I had one of my white classmates walk up to me at the gathering and she stopped and she had tears in her eyes. And I was like, what's going on here? And she said, I just want to tell you that your example as a student changed my trajectory as a person. I could never have guessed that I'd have the opportunity to make this level of change here at Rice. That's what Rice does. It gives us the opportunity to be impact players. I think it's really important for you guys to also understand that you guys as undergrads give us life. When there are current events that pop up, probably one of the first things I think about is you. What are you guys feeling? What are you guys discussing? What are you guys going through? How are you guys helping each other out? But then the other thing I think of is, how can then I turn around and help you guys? Uh, right now I'm working for a Rice Black alumnus. Her name is Corey Dorsey. I'm at the MD Anderson Cancer Hospital in the Health Disparities Department. Um, and she graduated 10 years ago, but she chose to come back and speak at a panel that Aruba held. And my friend was able to get her card and knew I was interested in the work that she does in public health and connected me with her. Um, and I was just talking to her yesterday and in awe of the fact that like, if you hadn't had come, if you hadn't had taken the time to come back to Rice, um, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't have this opportunity. I wouldn't um, have this stepping stone to achieving the goals and the dreams that I have for myself. So what's clear is that we've come a long way from the 1960s. What's also clear is that we have a long way to go. One of the things about creating diverse and inclusive communities is that you have to be in it for the long game. You can't work on diversity today and be done with it. You need to work on it day after day after day. And it's the successes we've seen that encourage us to travel the rest of the distance. And that's really, I think, why this celebration is so important. We celebrate what has been achieved, but we celebrate it with an eye toward what can still be done.